So, I'm an amygdala whisperer, and you've all got one, so we're all partners in crime. Your amygdala is that small, almond-shaped area of the brain that sets off the fight-or-flights in response to perceived threats in the environment. I became very interested in my amygdala around the time my ex and I started co-parenting our three-year-old son. My amygdala was engaged pretty much full-time during our, well, I hesitate to call them communication because there was hardly ever any of that going on. I noticed what my amygdala was doing to my body chemistry and my sleep patterns with all these chemicals pumping through my veins. So I decided to do things differently. And my inner critic didn't appreciate that much. This ridiculous tyrant dominates the 60,000 or so thoughts a day we all have, and very little, if anything, it has to say is ever true. Ever. I put up this little sign by my computer monitor at home and on my cubicle wall at work to remind me of that when my inner critic attempted to reassert its authority. And I started picturing it as this monkey on my back that I could pick up and move around and have some fun with. I documented my progress with all of this, no matter how small, on a scroll of stamped baby steps to prove my inner critic wrong. Fast forward to one sub-zero February evening in 2014, I had barrels full of monkeys left over from another project. I wanted to do something with them, something creative, something I'd love to do, something I was good at. And it had to include sharing the monkeys and the cards and the scrolls with other people and humor, lots of humor. Because as Mark Twain said, the human race has only one really effective weapon and that's laughter. What I came up with is a street hug, a tiny care package tucked inside a self-closing paper box that fits in the palm of your hand with a letter addressed to the person who finds it. I started dropping these all over the metro area anonymously in restaurants, street stairwells, little libraries, metro transit. One afternoon, riding the bus home from work, I was putting some of them together, and someone saw me. He thought I'd found one, and he asked, do you know who's making those? And he pulled out the It's Not True card from his wallet. I was taken aback. The possibility of interacting with someone who'd actually encountered a street hug in the wild hadn't been a conscious part of my game plan but he was undeniable evidence of having made the kind of difference that inspired the project in the first place. Or so I thought, until I heard from Nikki. That summer, I'd taken the 99 Days of Freedom Challenge away from Facebook. And in the fall, I was reminded of the other tab in the messages section of my Facebook page. So I went to check it out to see if anything needed my attention. And there was Nikki's message from last March. And she attached a photo. I didn't understand what I was looking at at first. Why would somebody track me down and send me a picture of her arm? And then I recognized the font of the tattoo. It still gives me goosebumps to think about it. <laughs> so at that point, I just started handing them out directly, like I'm doing tonight. There's a street hug making its way to you as we speak. And when you play around with it, ask yourself these three questions. What's in your head that you're ready to stop listening to? What are you good at? What do you love to do? And how can you share that with other people? Happy amygdala.